Josh Graham, go ahead. Hubert, Hubert Leakey was, was just telling us that, that Michael's message to the team was to play with passion and to play even with more passion than you show, which we know is a lot. How would you describe that scene of Michael talking to the team and what it might have done for your guys? Well, I, I thought our team did play with a lot of passion and, and energy and toughness. And, you know, one of the things that we had talked about in preparation to, you know, the three games this week is that, you know, there's three things that we wanted to, to focus on. Number one, um, being the best defensive team that we could be. Uh, number two, rebounding the basketball really well. And uh, the third thing is take care of the basketball. And um, I told them that I'm not a really big stat guy, but just looking at the stats when we, you know, there's there's a difference in the, you know, the wins versus the losses in terms of average points per game. I think it was 63 to 90. You know, there was there was a difference in terms of the stats in terms of rebounding the basketball. And there was a difference in terms of the stats between the wins and the losses and and uh, taking care of the basketball and not turning the ball over. And I. And I said, if you take those three things and we do those things really well, the offense will take care of itself. And in combination with the, you know, the energy and the effort and the passion that they had, we just played really well today. And I'm just, I'm very proud of this team. Michael Cove. I know you just said you're not a big stat guy, but when you see that Four quarters ended with at least three assists. You've talked a lot about sharing the basketball this season. What does that say about this offense that um, those guys can rack up uh, that many assists? Well, I also gave them this other stat. You know, we were seven and zero when Caleb has five or more assists. We're um, eight and zero when Leaky has three or more assists. And prior to this game, we were ten and four when RJ had more assists and turnovers. And I said, we got to get back to sharing the basketball. And I love their ability to score. But when you, when we consistently pass up good shots to get great shots and we're sharing the basketball and it's a combination of ball movement plus player movement, I think we're really good offensively and I think we shoot the ball really well. I mean, every night we're not going to make 15 threes, but the ball movement and the player movement was really good. And um, But I, I think it all started from how we played defensively, how we rebounded the basketball, and how we took care of the basketball against, against NC State because, you know, their pressure on the ball creates a lot of turnovers. And I, I just thought we did a really good job of not turning the ball over. Thank you. <clears throat> Kip Coons. Yeah, Hubert, uh, considering how well your team played in front of the 82 guys today, uh, how soon would you like to get the 93 team into uh, the uh, Smith Center? Yeah, we can get the 93 team, the 2017 team. If, if we're going to play like that, let's get them all here. It's, uh, it was really neat uh, for me personally to have the uh, 82 team here because I just – I remember them winning the national championship. You know, I think I said this before in the – press conference yesterday, I remember missing the first half of the championship game against Georgetown because I was a Boy Scout and we had a Boy Scout meeting and my parents wouldn't allow me to skip the Boy Scout meeting to watch the entire game. So I only got to watch the second half. But, you know, to have uh, Michael here and Buzz Peterson and Matt Doherty and um, the 82 team is, you know, and for our guys to be able to see them, and um, see the bond that they have had for so many years because they have shared experiences of playing together and being a team. I think it really encouraged them and it gave them a, a great visual of what it's like to be a team and what it means to be successful here at North Carolina. See y'all, Brian? That, that actually was my question just on in terms of you know, you're, you're talking, you, you talk a lot to them about the history and tradition of about this place and actually having physically in front of them. Um, I, I was wondering, yeah, how you felt like it, it impacted them. Was, was there anything that you feel like will carry over because of this in terms of, you know, uh, your togetherness and how you play? Well, my hope is, is that it carries over and my hope is, is that it builds you know, I, I was really emotional after the game today. 
And I was emotional because I was just, I was just really proud of the guys, you know, just last week, they were taking a lot of heat after losing to Miami and, and Wake Forest and the manner in which we lost. And I just remember a, a week ago us having a team meeting and them thinking that I was going to be angry with them, and it was the exact opposite. I was so proud of them. And I told them that, you know, we have to stick together. We have to be positive. We, we have to be enthusiastic. And, and, and more importantly, we have to do this together. And for us to come for this week and play three unbelievable teams in Virginia Tech and Boston College and NC State, and for us to play the way that we did, um, it's just an example of perseverance, uh, an example of fight. And um, I'm just really proud of them. Andrew Jones. Coach Brady spoke about the defense in the first half, about guys rotating, helping out, and ch and other guys challenging shots. Uh, what stood out to you about what you really liked what they what the guys did defensively in the first half? I thought everybody was tied in together. We were playing great team defense. In the second half against Boston College, Brady, when I get upset, Brady says, oh, you're coming in hot, coach. And then when I get upset, RJ says, I'm bugging. And so after the game, they were like, Coach, you were bugging and you came in hot. And so, and I said, Yeah, I was bugging. Yes, I came in hot. And then the next day, I showed them 13 clips in the second half of why I was bugging and why I was hot. And it was just really good for them. I said, This is why I was upset. And I said, I was upset because we weren't playing defense as a team in the second half against Boston College. But I said, the bigger picture is, is, you know, against this won't work against NC State. I said, they're too good. This is not going to work against the remaining teams that we're playing. And for them to see it and then for me to give them those stats about defense and rebounding, take care of the basketball, I just really felt like it gave them a perspective, a clear outlook of what we needed to do as a team and our help defense was great I, I can't remember how many blocks that we have but our weak side defenders wait I mean um, NC State one of the things they do really well is they attack the offensive boards they're the number one offensive rebounding team in our league especially when those guards attack the basket their big guys just roll to the basket and they get a lot of offensive rebounds our our help side defenders came over and boxed out and I just our togetherness defensively was the best part today. It was really good. Not just leaky. We're going to time for a few more. Josh. Hey, Coach. Uh, all five starters got on the board early in that, in that uh, first half. How important is it for you guys to get out to an early lead like you did today? Because that hasn't really happened uh, in the past few games, and that obviously erupted into a much larger lead with that uh, really good first half. Well, it's always good to get off to a good start. Um, my focus is on sustaining that throughout the game. And I felt like we did that in large part. I mean, the, the, the big key for me was coming out at halftime. You know, we talked about that first five minutes, you know, continue to defend and rebound and take care of the basketball, continue to put pressure on them as we push the ball in transition and attack the basket through post penetration and offensive rebounds. And so that first five minutes in the second half, we were able to actually extend our lead. And so that was the point that I was uh, most proud about is, is that we didn't come out in the second half and feel like we accomplished something just for 20 minutes. We actually got better in the second half and um, continue to do that throughout the game. All right, we've got two more, Trayvon and then Isaac, and we're going to get Caleb in here in a moment. So. Hey, Hubert, just from your history and relationship with Coach Roy Williams, how important and how special was it to see your guys play the, the way they did uh, the day that you guys honored him? Well, I, I just thought it was important for us to play well because we wanted to play well. You know, it was great having, um, you know, to play on a day where Coach Williams was honored. It was great to play a day where the 82 championship was honored and recognized. Um, also, Raymond Felton and um, Marvin Williams were here. And so just to see so many former players and, and coaches and, you know,
Carolina family here at the game and being able to experience this place and be able to cheer on the current guys, that's the thing that was fun for me is that um, there's nothing better than a Saturday afternoon game um, in the Smith Center. And uh, to be able to play well with the 82 team here and also a celebration for Coach Williams, it just makes it a really good day today. It was a, it, today was a good day for Carolina basketball. Isaac, last one for Coach Day. Coach, uh, with with Dawson still not here, and obviously we hope things are going well back home for him and his family. Uh, how important is it to see what Puff did today? Career high eight points, six rebounds, first three pointer of the season. Talk. Well, you know the thing that I, I like about Puff, like he he doesn't he doesn't care when he gets in the game the manner in which he gets in the game, how he gets in the game. He just wants to play. And I just saw him before I came here. He was in a training room, and nothing was wrong with him. He was just explaining that he was on fire. He says he couldn't stop moving. <laughs> and I mean, he was just diving on the floor. He was guarding everybody out there on the floor. He was rebounding. He, uh, you know, over this entire season, I've at great length, I've talked about you know, energy, effort, and toughness. I don't have to ever mention that to Puff. You know, he plays with a sense of urgency and a joy that I think really only comes from him, his inability to play the last couple of years. You know, I mean, he's hardly played last year. He was injured most of the year this year. And so when he gets a chance to get out on the court, the joy of playing, the joy of being healthy, the joy of having an opportunity to be out there on that floor, it just comes out in his play. And um, he played really well today. He's 6'8", he's long, he's versatile on the defensive end, and I really feel like he can get even better because he's not even in a rhythm offensively. And so um, I was really proud of Puff, his energy and his effort and um, the plays that he made today. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Um, Thank everybody, you. sit tight. We'll have Caleb here momentarily.